description. Our catechism recitation for this morning continues our review of the Ten Commandments and their meanings on this morning, the Ninth Commandment. What is the Ninth Commandment? Thou, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. What does this mean? We should fear and love God that we may not craftily seek to get our neighbor's inheritance or house, nor obtain it by a show of right, but help and be of service to him in keeping it. And on this Sunday after the ascension of our Lord, his ascension back into his heavenly home, certainly is our theme for this morning in our readings and our hymns and our meditations. Our opening hymn, number 222 from the Lutheran hymnal, Look ye saints, the sight is glorious. <laughs>
Our psalm for this morning's service is Psalm number 47. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with the voice of triumph, for the Lord Most High is awesome. He is a great king over all the earth. He will subdue the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He will choose our inheritance for us, the excellence of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the people have gathered together. The people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Our first reading from the Holy Scriptures this morning is the account of the ascension of the prophet Elijah into heaven by God's mighty power, as demonstrated in the marvelous signs that accompany this taking of the faithful prophet into heaven. As we hear in the second book of the kings of Israel, the second chapter. And it came to pass, when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Then Elijah said to him, Elisha, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho came to Elisha and said to him, Do you know? that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? So he answered, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance, while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water. And it was divided this way and that, 
so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. So it was, when they had crossed over, that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask, what may I do for you before I am taken away from you? Elisha said, Please, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So he said, You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Then it happened as they continued on and talked that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. So he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. He also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had struck the water, it was divided this way and that, and Elisha crossed over. Now when the sons of the prophets who were from Jericho saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah rests upon Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. Then they said to him, Look now, there are fifty strong men with your servants. Please let them go and search for your master, lest perhaps the spirit of the Lord has taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, You shall not send anyone. But when they urged him till he was ashamed, he said, Send them. Therefore they sent fifty men, and they searched for three days, but did not find him. And when they came back to him, for he had stayed in Jericho, he said to them, did I not say to you, do not go? But the Lord have mercy upon us. for the Feast of the Ascension of our Lord Christ Jesus is from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, the first chapter, the account of our Lord's Ascension. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you, shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. 
Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, would you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also sat Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who is taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. But thou, o Lord, have mercy upon us. for the Feast of the Ascension, the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. But thou, Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to Next in is number 218 in the Lutheran hymnal. See the conqueror mounts in triumph.
Grace to you and peace from God, your heavenly Father, and his Son, Jesus Christ, the ascended Lord, your Savior, and the Holy Spirit, who supplies to you a double portion of himself that you might both confess the truth and live according to it. Your human nature having been raised together with the ascension of your Savior to your heavenly dwelling place forever. Amen. The ascension of the Lord Jesus is an article of the Christian faith. It is professed in the Holy Scriptures, not only as we find it in the book of the Acts of the Apostles and in the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark and Luke as well. But we also see it typified in the Old Testament. One of the clearest examples of that being our reading this morning regarding the ascension of the prophet Elijah. See, that wasn't just merely the way that God used to bring the faithful prophet into heavenly glory but it was also a type, a visual prophecy of the ascension of Jesus after he had accomplished his mission and ministry and service is likewise taken into heavenly glory. But it is not just a mere end of the story. Though it is, it addresses the question, what happened to that Jesus fellow? You know, if he truly is risen from the dead, and so indeed he is, then the world might ask, then where is he? Why isn't he still in the world? Why won't he make himself visible and prove to the world that indeed he exists, that he lived, he died, he rose again? It is necessary that he ascend back into heaven, not only to complete his journey, but to visibly demonstrate to you, his people, that that is the end of your story as well. Jesus came in human form, this son of the eternal God from heaven. That has been confessed again is taught in the Holy Scriptures and professed in the confession of faithful Christians throughout every generation. But that he had come for you. He had come to live your life. Every single stage of it from conception, through gestation, through birth, through infancy, through toddlerhood, through teen years, into adulthood. Living life as a child of God, the very Son of God, by His divine nature in and together with his 
human nature in his physical body so that he could accomplish all things needful for the salvation of God's people. Living in accord with all of the commandments that God has given to us. That life in which we fall short of the mark time and time again. Jesus has lived it for you. And then those marks on our record. The sins against God for every single act and word and thought of disobedience to the word and will of God was taken into the flesh of Jesus when he dies upon the cross. And he takes up his life again on the third day. Rising victorious over sin and death and hell. On that glorious Easter morning. But here now is the culmination of it all. Because remember something that has never happened before and has not happened since has taken place in the coming of Jesus into the world. God knew sin. The sins of the world truly were in and with Jesus on the cross and no sinner can enter into heaven it's why God has left his church on earth to proclaim the forgiveness of sins to the end of this earth and to the end of this age because it's essential Men and women and children must be forgiven of their sins by God through his word. And believing that word, there is the forgiveness of sins and eternal life with God. But were the sins of the world truly forgiven? In the sacrifice of Jesus, his ascension tells us without doubt, sin is forgiven. Because he's not only received into heaven, as the scriptures clearly testify, his disciples saw him. We have eyewitness accounts of those who, as they stood there, saw a most remarkable sight. Something also that had never been experienced in the world before. A man flew, rising up through the first heaven where the birds of the air fly as the Holy Scriptures speak of that first heaven. And he flew through the second heaven where the sun and the moon and the stars and all of the heavenly bodies have been placed there by God. What we sometimes call outer space, the Scriptures speak of as the second heaven and beyond that beyond physical distance is the third heaven into which Saint Paul himself was once taken up describing the very place where God dwells Jesus does not just go up into the sky and into outer space 
but back into heaven. And even more, he is received back into God. Because did you hear about that cloud? The cloud that was there in that first heaven as he was rising up that his disciples see and he was received into the cloud that's not speaking merely of a physical white puffy gathering of water vapor that we know a cloud now to be but the cloud signifies God himself. Again, from the Old Testament scriptures, the cloud appears especially to mark the presence of God among the children of Israel. It is that cloud that protected them from the chariots of Pharaoh, and his armies as they came chasing the children of Israel as they began the exodus. And a pillar of cloud moved between the armies of Egypt and the people of God to keep them safe. Not just a mere physical manifestation, but it is God himself protecting his people. That same cloud appeared before the children of Israel every single day of those 40 years in the wilderness. Standing before them as a witness that God indeed is with his people. Guiding every step of their way. When they should go. The direction in which they should travel where they should stop again and camp. And then, of course, to top it off, that pillar of cloud is transformed into a pillar of fire so that the presence of God, both day and night, is exhibited for God's people, then and now. When the children of Israel are directed to erect a tabernacle, a tent of animal skins that will form the central structure of their formal worship of God. God himself appears in a cloud. The Shekinah cloud, the cloud of God's glory, to testify that he is with them, especially in worship. It is his service of his people as he comes to be where he calls them so that he might proclaim the forgiveness of sins and the assurance of salvation to all who believe this, all who believe in him the one who is eternal and beckons his people into eternal life. That is where Jesus has gone. Not just back into heaven, as marvelous as that is, but back into the Godhead, which he actually never left. But so that we might know with assurance that now Jesus bears no sin. Because he goes into the place of God and into God himself, a place where no sinner can go. Sin is forgiven. And so indeed is yours. The ascension of Jesus now becomes the depiction of what happens at the end of your story. Not merely resurrection, again as miraculous as that is, because all flesh will be raised. That's an article of faith 
taught in the Holy Scriptures as well. Because then will come the judgment of all who have ever lived. All will be raised to face that judgment. But then, for you, ascension into heaven and into the very presence of your God, just as your Savior has led you. This is what faith brings to you. That assurance. We marvel at the ascension of Elijah. Wow, to go into heaven, what an experience. That will be yours. Wow, to see Jesus rising above the earth and then being received into God. That will be you also. Because you're bound to him, your savior. Holy baptism. He who believes. By the faith that baptism creates. That water and that word. And that spirit. Brings you. That assurance. That's where you're going. With out a doubt for any who believe. It really is that simple. And now your life, your life here, it's now lived in that light. You know the end of your story. And so now you live already at the right hand of God with your Savior. For the right hand of God is again not a physical place. But it is in the honored place in the presence of God. We use that phrase as well in our own speaking of a right hand man. The most trusted of those in our family or our co-workers. So even as Jesus is at the right hand of God, back in the place of honor, even as he is crowned the king of heaven and earth in his coronation, his ascension, it's yours too. You already have the crown of eternal life Wear it proudly and know what it signifies. Eternal life for you and the life of faith here and now. Empowered by that double portion of the Holy Spirit. The first portion, that which creates faith. And the second portion, the very power of that Holy Spirit that leads the faithful of people of God into living that life of love for God. Worshipping Him. Praising Him. And above all, calling upon Him for His power in our troubled times in this life. And through the power of faith that He creates, believing in Him and believing his word. The word that also directs us to love our neighbors as ourselves. That's an every day, every hour, every moment thing. It's not just talking about extraordinary events in your life. Although many of you have exhibited many of those. But it's the day-to-day, hour-to-hour, moment-to-moment faithfulness in which you live the Christian life. Even in the most humble of ways, it's to the praise of the God who has crowned you with such honor as being his royal and loyal subjects of an everlasting kingdom. 
one that even now extends around the globe, and one that will find its ultimate fruition on the heights of heaven, your everlasting dwelling place. See how God loves you. Love yourself in that same measure. And let him continue to be the king of your life. For he is the king of all who believe everlastingly. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our next hymn, number 215 in the Lutheran hymnal, Draw Us to Thee. <laughs> Maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. We continue the prayers. Grant, we beseech thee, Almighty God, that at, like as we do believe thine only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so may we also in heart and mind thither ascend, and with him continually dwell who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. My Father, my Father, even as the prophet Elisha called out to you, Heavenly Father, for mercy upon his spiritual father, Elijah, so we call upon you for your tender mercies to fall upon us, especially the power of your word that declares that we already by faith are ascended with our Lord and Savior Jesus to heavenly heights. Lead us now to live such a divine and heavenly life during our time yet in this world, that your kingdom might be manifested among us, that kingdom of grace and love, and have it be extended even to the ends of the earth. We pray your continued blessings upon your church and her people in every place, and we ask that you would continue to bless the missionary endeavors of your churches and your people everywhere, that many more might come in and hear this saving, wondrous word. We pray that you would continue your blessings among la familia, the family. And we join with our dear sister in Christ, Sophia, in praying your blessing upon our own families, that you would grant unto them all things needful, particularly for wellness in the face of health challenges. And we pray that you would particularly bless with healing and strengthening and comforting on this day those who are sick among us, in our family circles and our circle of friends. Remember in your mercies, Carol and Pat, also Sherman, and we rejoice that Kathy is here with us this day. Continue your tender mercies towards Kinsey and give her guidance on making consequential medical decisions regarding her future care. And also remember Ryan and Dick and Irene and Kurt and all those others who are in need. We pray for those who are in need of comforting and consolation as they grieve and mourn over the recent passing of loved ones and ask that you would continue to blanket them with your love, your peace at such a time as they have need of this divine gift. We ask that you would continue your tender mercies towards the world, especially putting an end to warfare and violence in all places, especially in Ukraine. Continue to keep Natalia and Emma particularly, 
but all the people of Ukraine safe in the midst of this warfare and put an end again to it and speedily so. We pray that you would continue the blessings of life for us all for indeed the very gift of life is that which you have handed unto each of us that marvelous biological process into which we have come into this world and we rejoice together with those who celebrate the anniversaries of this gift as they mark their birthdays especially for little Waverly marking three years but also for Daniel and Mitchell and Amanda and pray that all of their days would be so blessed and filled with goodness and happiness. We pray that you would bless the confirmands of our parish, especially for Ingeborg and Daniel who are preparing to take their confirmation vows next Saturday night. And also to our seminary students soon finishing the course of their studies and graduating and also then being called and ordained servants of the word we pray every blessing upon Benjamin Henson and Jacob Henson as they prepare for this most holy and wondrous calling go with us wherever life's journey <coughs> might take us in this coming week especially for Marianne and Jan and Deb as they make their sister trip and for all of us wherever you would bring us in this life so that we might remember that we are ever at the right hand of God no matter where we might be found in this world and life for these and all other things you see that we need we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior here on earth but sit us at the right hand of thy father lord over all things we beseech thee send us thy holy spirit give thy church pious pastors preserve thy word control and restrain the devil and all who would oppress us mightily uphold thy kingdom until all thy enemies shall have been put under thy feet that we may hold the victory over sin death and the devil through thee, who livest and reignest with God the Father and the Holy Ghost, one true God, world without end. Crown him with many crowns in the Lutheran hymnal number 341. 